Hey, hey, hey. What's going on? Welcome to the Tezos Artcast, episode number five. Ah, it's a lovely morning here. And I'm sure it's lovely wherever you're at. Uh, welcome. Excited to uh, be welcoming on a guest today. So uh, excited to get into that. And uh, yeah, it's going to be going to be a good time. Actually, we're just going to jump in and get started. So uh, today we're going to be talking to Crypt Teams, um, who's built an HTML uh, music album uh, player. Uh, mintable on Hicket Nunk. Um, super cool. So I'm going to welcome him on right now. Hey. Hey, what's going on? Hey, hey. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you as well. I'm Jeff. Good to meet you finally. I'm Martin. Uh, good to meet you as well. Martin, good to meet you. Uh, can you hear me okay and everything? Everything's fine. Uh, Music level okay in the background here? Yeah, music level is perfect. I, I kind of hear my own voice twice. Okay, uh, you've got headphones on, right? Yeah. Are you um, are you watching on any other uh, stream, like on Twitch or anything? Nope. Nope. Okay. Huh. Now, let's see. Here. No, just have it open in Chrome. Gotcha. Um, one second. But it's not very disturbing, so it's it's okay. Okay. Is it like oh. you're in a reverb chamber or what? <laughs> yeah, but very silent. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let me just check your mic settings real quick over here. Okay. All right. Uh, so yeah, welcome. Uh, how's how's your day going so far? Pretty amazing, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was it was a. Uh... Yeah, I mean it's a World Art Day today, right? So that's right. That's I've right. I've been celebrating with all the others the amazing art that not only Hicket Nunk has to offer, but everything else. So yeah. um, it was kind of awesome to see what everybody has to offer today. Yeah, for sure. I lo I love. Uh, so I'm I'm not crazy, right? You've got a little. Uh, a little um, trail going on uh, when you move. What? Little, I don't know uh, what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you probably so, yeah. have seen my, my profile picture on, on Twitter and everywhere else. Yes. Yeah, let's, uh, let, me, let me just go to that real quick. Yeah, that's yeah. me. <laughs> I'm, I'm always looking like this. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought maybe you had drawn over it or something, but no, nope, it's uh, you. You just that's that's it's, who you are. That's just me. Yeah, <laughs> you being authentically you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, the sun is shining. It's it's quite it has been quite warm today, so I, I gained some color. I'm not that pale as in the my profile picture. <laughs> right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, so tell tell me a little bit about uh, like the the music album uh, uploader and stuff. Like what what kind of actually before I get into that, uh, I guess I want to know a little bit more about you uh, just in general. Kind of what mm -hmm. what brought you into uh, the crypto art space, and I mean maybe just art in general. Like what's what kind of what's your history behind all all of the, mm -hmm. what you do. Mm, I think art in general just came to me naturally since I was small. I was okay. always, always experimenting with uh, technologies and with visual stuff, photographing since I was small. And um, yeah, I don't know. I started uh, working in digital art like 10 to 15 years ago. But okay. it was more like me exploring possibilities and not me receiving myself or perceiving myself as an artist and being out in the art world. Yeah. Um, I'm working as a designer. And uh, I never actually published any art before. I always wanted to go into art and wanted to have exhibitions. 
but uh, since I was doing digital art, I always had the impression there is not that much space where you can exhibit digital art in a cool way. Sure. And yeah, suddenly uh, in the beginning of this year, there was NFT. <laughs> Yeah. And everything changed. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting because uh, I know that's that's kind of a big thing. I, I have a friend of mine and he was he was very much into um, you know, he didn't he didn't like to paint very much, but he loved uh, kind of like what South Park ended up doing with like, uh, you know, paper cutouts and kind of layering them uh, to make characters and whatnot. And he started to get into uh, more digital uh, stuff, digital painting and whatnot, but he always felt like it was a little bit cheap or he didn't know how to uh, convince people that it was, you know, as creative or as, as much uh, value as some of the other work he had produced in more traditional Forms. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so now that, I, yeah, I think that it's it's a nice uh, bridge here to have to add some value to digital art and you know finding more spaces to uh, to post it in and stuff. But yeah. especially with VR is an interesting uh, yeah an interesting I've, avenue too. I've seen some some artists really painting live in in VR with a. I don't know the name of the tools, but <laughs> right, it's, right. It's, it's pretty amazing when you can paint in 3D space. Yeah, definitely. I uh, got my wife uh, the Oculus um, a year and a half ago, and I ended mm -hmm. up using it more than she did <laughs> uh, just because of those uh, those spaces, like the painting in 3D. And yeah. it's just really, yeah, it's, it's really interesting to be able yeah. to do that. So. Yeah. yeah, and also now that there is a possibility to have interactive uh, NFTs, I haven't seen that before. I mean, when I started, I I think first I got aware of NFTs and the possibilities they offer was in January. Uh huh. And um, it was with the hash masks, actually. I, I read somewhere about hash masks. Uh huh. And I thought, oh, what's that? Oh, hmm, interesting idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I actually, I immediately signed up on OpenSea. Uh -huh. And uh, I mean, I was thinking, oh, wow, uh, the stuff I have with my, my Zeitstudio series, that's it's, it's quite old. I did it like nine years ago. Yeah, but um, I thought, ah, that could be could be a new way to to bring that out in the world and and see where it goes and maybe it finds uh, an audience. Right. So, so I signed up on OpenSea, put it up there, and the first thing I thought, oh wow, okay, to uh, to just get my wallet connected to the OpenSea wallet, I have to pay hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, okay, let's do it. Maybe they say uh, that's the only time you have to pay something. Then I put yeah. up some of my works and uh, it was up for um, for auction. Then I got a bid on one piece and I was I was really I was willing to sell it for that amount by but the same amount I would have uh, sold it for I had to pay for for another uh, gas fee. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, I know Tezos since the beginning, but I didn't know at that time that Tezos was also uh, an NFT platform. Sure. And, um, yeah, that's a whole new possibility that's going on there when you have to pay almost no fees and just can get your your stuff out there. And also with the possibility to to have um, interactive stuff now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, accessibility is a big thing, and price yeah. having having that price barrier is is huge. Um, I think I think when you give artists the opportunity and, and empower them with a new technology um, without putting a price barrier up, you see a huge explosion of mm. 
of what's uh, of the potential that's there. Um, otherwise, yeah, you're limited to being, you know, a very wealthy artist uh, and having yeah. access to the space and, uh, and yeah. sell for sixty nine million. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, and I think you brought up a really interesting, a good point too about um, just uh, the interact interactive uh nature of things mm. and i think one thing i've noticed or i'm i'm starting to bring up more in conversation is how um art and video are one use case of the nft technology um but they're not the only use case and I think when people kind of understand that like, you know, you're not um, limited to to just doing static art. Mm. Mm. Oh, what the heck? Hold on one second, I just had a <laughs> glitch here. Okay, sorry, technical difficulties. No problem. Uh, <laughs> um, basically, the you know the the idea of having like an authentication token that shows that you know this is one of five pieces or um, however it's used um, has a lot of different applications and art's just mm -hmm. one of them. And because you have uh, you know this code behind the art or behind whatever you're doing, that it becomes something so much more or it, it has so much more uh possibilities to what it can do and interactivity is is one of those things you know it's it's really cool yeah i think it has the potential to be i don't know a platform for every kind of um service someone has to offer can every everything that's not physical can be can be located on the blockchain and given a unique uniqueness yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so going from there, uh, that interactivity, is that kind of what inspired the uh, the music album uh, player? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, t tell me a little bit more about that project because that's uh, really cool. I, I got to play mm. with it the other day and it was really straightforward and easy to, to do. So Cool. Yeah, I really tried to to reduce to the the fewest things you need to have to uh, to use a player not to put in too much um yeah the idea was i mean i'm i'm often working together with stereo hopper yes and uh, let's uh let me go ahead and i'm gonna play that uh while you're talking yeah his his his, tu his tunes are great <sighs> Ooh, whoops, whoops. So. Okay, so this is on your music player right now. This is the music player that we're displaying. Yes. Available for two Tez here. Oh, wow. wow. Hmm. Half an hour ago, it was still two left for one Tez. <laughs> now, I just pulled this up off of... Uh, I don't know if there's a couple others, but... Um, yeah, we were at your page here. So yeah. there's this one here, 2593? Yeah. Or yes. 25359, yeah. Yeah, yeah, today was, uh, I, I sold several of them today. There was some some great people using it today. Um, I'm pretty pretty amazed. It was a busy day because uh, there were some, some other music artists who um, found it last night and already published something today. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's really that's, nice. That's yeah, cool. And working with uh, Stereo Hopper, I mean, we know each other since way back. And uh, he's doing tons of music and had kind of the same same thing as me, that there was not really, when you don't have a label as a musician, I think there is not the, not an easy or easygoing way to, to put out your stuff in the world. Sure. You're and not as connected to, or you mental or you're not perceiving yourself as connected to to that world Ex right exactly yeah right and um 
I mean, we started with these uh, with the stereo hopper series of the 32 beats, for 30 second looping beats, and I did the visuals to it. And we were already talking about what possibility it would be to to publish a whole music album. Yeah. And I didn't see any way how that could be possible at that time. I mean, we started with video with audio. Um, right. And then there was first the possibility to publish SVG files. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know that it was possible to have that kind of interactivity inside an SVG that you that you also can can play music in an SVG file. For my designer mind, SVG is a vector graphics format. <laughs> right, yeah. That's uh, that's kind of what I, I thought too. Yeah, but uh, apparently it's possible to do all JavaScript programming inside an SVG that you also can do in HTML. Wow. And so that was, uh, I think, uh, the one and one guys published the first uh, music album ever with their SVG version. And right, I think they're they're actually I think they're uh, live streaming right now with uh, another. Uh, yeah, with podcast. Vertical Crypto. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. That's right. So um, it's, it's uh, music night tonight on yeah, all that's channels. Right. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, World Art Day, music, let's, let's go, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, and then so when, you, when, when, yeah, so when Hicket Nang, uh, I'm also I'm on the Discord channel, and when they talked about the possibility would come to Mint HTML, mm -hmm. um, I immediately started making the player. Right, okay. So this is all HTML and... That's HTML and JavaScript. I'm using the JavaScript library, jQuery. I don't know if you're acquainted with it. Uh, Not super familiar, but um, yeah. But it's it's just, it's so it is so simple and um, and so the you basically um, I'm just going to read the description for people. Uh, if you want to release your own music album as an NFT on Hicket Nunk, you can use this as the template. Uh, it's open source, so you can use it for free, but we'd appreciate if you donate by buying it as an NFT. Uh, 10 batches with 10 pieces from one Tez to 10 Tez. Take it, take, take it for what it's worth to you. Yeah. Um, now, I, I had the opportunity to use it, um, mm -hmm. and I, I, because I was interested, I have a couple of friends that uh, do some great music, but they're not familiar with uh, how the blockchain works and stuff. So mm -hmm. uh, they've sent me some files uh, previously to do kind of a cassette project, and I was able to get um, get their files loaded up, and uh, it was really easy. And the documentation in the uh, GitHub is, or in the README file, is perfect. So I want to give you a thumbs up there. <laughs> I there's been a couple to... of projects that I've I've tried to kind of dive into where it was just outside of my my comfort level. But I think yeah. even somebody who is coming to the platform, who's coming into this space and wanting to do this, uh, I, I, f I feel like it's accessible to them and pretty, pretty straightforward. So I, I commend you on that because. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I, I try to make it as easy as possible. I mean, it's basically when, as soon as you're not, uh, you're not fearful of editing an HTML file, which might people might be. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, I also got the question: What other formats might be possible? I'm using MPEG three here as audio format. Mm -hmm. But since there is no special um, audio engine behind it, it's it's pure HTML. I mean, HTML has the ability to play back audio files and video files, and that's yeah. all. This is all the what the the JavaScript is doing is only the the player, the user interface, and the functionality. But the playback is pure HTML, so it should even be possible to use. I don't know, um, FLAC files or, or WAF, but 
that might get you into an issue with a file size. Right. Yeah. That's that's a big limitation right now. Right. So so this is uh, this was kind of like a personal pet project that you did with a Stereo Hopper um, to get again more accessibility for uh, musicians to be able to publish yeah. on Hicket Nunk. Um, we, now, we first go ahead. We first published uh, one album for Stereo Hopper, mm -hmm. the, the Cryptological album. It's t techno and uh, mostly techno. Do you have a Do you have a link to that? Uh, you can yeah. Maybe put in the chat or. Yeah. Wait a sec. And if 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 you have if at any time you wanted to share anything uh, that you have on your screen, let me know. Uh, I'm able to share your screen as well. Okay. Um, if that's something that you'd want to do or whatnot, just so you're aware. I'll send you the link to Stereo Hoppers profile on it. Perfect. I just sent it in the private chat, right? Yep. That's perfect. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. So that's loading right now, but uh, yeah. Um, it's nice that the, 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 the digital nice art. The, that our that the little bot trap is showing up first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yes. we experienced yeah. both yeah. last week yeah. that when you put up the freebie on Hick, uh huh, it often gets snatched in the second you you swap it. Really? Yes. And uh, I had the 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 experience, and Stereo Hopper has it had it as, as well. And then he put up the the bot trap. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's cool. Bot trap. I like that. Um, yeah, that's that's the album there over the bot the in the row over the bot trap on the left a little oh, bit this yeah year. yes perfect so this was kind of the the uh, default or the first project that you guys released that was the first uh, album released with the with the player and as you can see, there are still uh, a few bugs, like it's not centered in the screen and it has a white background. Mm -hmm. I tried to, that was, it's, it's uh, all experimental. And I mean, nobody knows if it will still work when Hicket Nunk is doing something to the, the website. But since it's not that experimental, since it's basically HTML, I think it all should be like it is now. Right, yeah. Nice. I don't hear it. I know. Ah, uh, yeah, that's the base. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we like to claim it as the first techno album on Tezos. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to add that to the collection. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing it right now. We're just he'll be go he'll it. be happy to see it. I, I think he's watching. <laughs> Good stereo hopper. Wicked t <laughs> wicked tunes, man. Wicked tunes. Cool. All right, it's in the official Tezos Artcast collection now. Amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, and after that, I thought, okay, why not put it out there? I came across so many people working with sound on Hicket Nong. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought I, I was already thinking before to put it out open source. Yeah. And um, then 
I was kind of I, I was unsure how to do it to just put it on GitHub and and put out the link or mint it as an NFT itself. So I decided right. to do it both. I mean, it was also an experiment because I like this approach: pay what you want. And since it's not possible right at the moment that uh, you can have an auction or can have um, potential buyers offer you a price, yeah, I just uh, tried it this way to make different batches to diff at different price points. Yeah, I think it's a good idea, and it works. Uh, and like I said, like, it's accessible and uh, yeah, easy to use. So. Yeah, I think, I think you hit your goals for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and and today there was um, what's his name again, Ruben Fro. Okay. He published an album today with the player. Oh, nice. Yeah. Sweet. So it's definitely starting to get around, get its use. Yes, it's really That's nice. Excellent. Nice to see that. The stone is starting to roll. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's another cool thing about being in, uh, I think, in in Tezos and just in this kind of art community is uh, the ability to participate in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's not just kind of one thing. It's, uh, it's a lot of different things. You know, there's a lot of things that can be built, which is what's great about open source. That's what's great about... Um, kind of decentralized applications in general. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. since Hiketnank itself is open source, it's always possible to participate there as well and make your own code or talk to the developers and make suggestions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so can you tell me a little bit, let's uh, pivot to uh, your work. Uh, yeah. and what you've been up to. Um, so you've got a new a new series coming out. Yeah, it's it's already it's it's coming out since a few weeks. Okay. One by one. And uh, actually right at right at the moment the the gallery is a bit messed up because you can't really um, shift things around or have different collections i would appreciate that it's also one one thing that's uh, i think highly um highly asked for on the the github from the getnunk that you can sort your collections or have different collections for different stuff definitely, uh, definitely because something that would be nice here you have uh when you look at my my creation tab there is a lot of pieces from my Zeitstrudel series, but also the player and the the other Tezos, Tezos logo animation there, and things I did before I started to to publish the Zeitstrudel series. So, and every time um, I'm always surprised. Every time I open up my own uh, creation step, it's in a different order. I don't know <laughs> what's how the code is deciding what to show in which direction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you open it and it's uh, it'll be like in numerical order from newest to oldest and then sometimes yeah. Yeah. it's shuffled. Yeah, I think it's it might be a shuffle algorithm. I don't, I'm really not sure. But I would uh, like to put all my Zeitstrudel pieces in, in one collection tab. So I think when you see it in an overview, it's more impressive when you see them all next to each other without other pieces in between. Yeah. But right here on this, on the, on the first two rows, you can, mm -hmm. there are already one, two, three, four, five pieces that belong to the series. Okay. And yeah, that one, that's actually a giveaway for today. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Birds number two? Yes. Okay, so when you... So Zeitstrudel. Um, yes. That is German? That's German. It's... Literal translation would be something like a time twirl or time vortex. Okay. 
Um, to be honest, I have no idea where the the name came from. It suddenly was there, and it's okay. picked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was. Um, I started with something different. Actually, I started with uh, one of the pictures you you posted on Twitter. The one with the the silhouette, the white silhouette. That's a little abstract yes that's yeah. uh that's the same technique used as on these okay and actually, and what, and what actually is, what is being used what's what is going on it's also the same that you that you see here with my hand <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um it's it's a it's a common video I shot of different things in this case of the, uh, seagulls in the sky. Yeah. Uh, video is shot with 25 frames a second. Okay. And uh, these are integrated into each other. So it's not like each video frame shows after the other, but they are all put on top of each other. That's really cool. And is that, um, is that, Kind of what you're doing throughout the series uh yes. is that is that specific to the zeitstrudel series or is that um kind of the medium that you're working in right now that is uh i, I don't know how you mean that i, I mean uh, are you is this kind of right now the uh primary way that you're creating your art is through this uh process that you described or is that yes. exclusive to zeitstrudel I think it will probably exclusive uh, this this way uh, to this make use of it like I'm um, doing here with observing things in nature in my surroundings. I mean, I'm looking at at animals. I'm looking at really small stuff that probably most of people on most days don't recognize, like the dark one, for example. The, the left on the left side the third yeah oh yeah this one this is you have uh, an idea what it is i yeah i've i've already gone through these and looked at some of them and this is one of my favorites so gonna... <laughs> uh, yeah okay but tell me about it because i think i know what's going on here but no tell me just... what do you think what you see Okay, so the first thing I see is like, I think of like maggots mm -hmm. and uh, in maggots in a compost pile or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah, that's, I, I think like ho all the horror movies that I've seen, and, <laughs> uh, but it's just, it's really cool. I, it, yeah. Okay, that's but, what I think it is. It's like maggots. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty close. Yeah. Okay. But it's not even maggots, it's tinier, it's mites. Mites? Yeah. Really? These, these tiny spidery things. Wow. And um, yeah, take these mites or take, I have another one with mosquitoes and um, the birds, obviously. It's all yeah. about I, I, what I think it's very fascinating about it is that you never observe motion in our surroundings. You always see the state now, but uh, the, the brain is in, in not capable of of holding the moment before that or kind of see the progress and... Um, yeah, kind of the dimension of time in it all. You only see what's right now, this moment, and everything else is forgotten immediately. And yeah. um, I thought it would be really fascinating to to see what it... to just kind of try to capture this this additional dimension. Yeah, no, it's it's really neat. And it reminds me... I remember seeing like um, 
old skateboarding photos uh, where they would, uh, they would show kind of a series of photographs that were just like snapped really quickly. And it would go through that whole process of this trick. And it was, I remember being so fascinated by that because you could really see, you know, the changes in the skateboarders, mm -hmm. uh, like stance and like their face sometimes would change. And, uh, and you're right with, especially with how, uh, fast paced everything is yeah. uh, in the world, you don't see and don't take time to appreciate uh, a yeah. lot of the movement. You just kind of take it for granted. So this is a really, this is a really neat way to. And the, uh, I think the most fascinating thing about it is that as soon as cinematography was invented, like in 80, I don't know what exactly, uh -huh. one of the first artists working with cinematography was doing exactly the same thing. I mean, even before it was something like cinema, he invented the possibility to, to shoot multiple images in a, in a very, very fast and capture movements, see this movement pattern of a walking human or a walking horse. It was Edward Muybridge. I don't know. Do you know him? Uh, I, I don't. Yeah, he was, uh, he always inspired me even. I can send you a link. Yeah, please. One of the the great heroes of cinematography and moving pictures. Missing Animal says this image is gorgeous. <sighs> Thank you. Well, oh, that's stereo. Yeah, this is yeah, this is beautiful. And now, uh, real quick, I got to ask the Blossom Green. What is uh, what is going on here? This is beautiful. I just have a sorry. I'm just picking oh, no out a random. It's it's a random block. I don't know what it is, but it's showing several of Edward Muybridge pictures. Oh, okay, great. Um, but first, Blossom Green. It's the same technique again. Mm -hmm. And it is a drop of um, watercolor in water. Oh, wow. Processed with the uh, touch Buddha algorithm. <laughs> wow. That's really cool. So when you, when you look closely, you see the, can you, can you make it big again? Yeah. You see the little steps. Uh huh. That's each video frame. Wow. This little jagged steps in the beginning, you see it the best. That's one yeah. video frame layered on top of the other. Right. Now, where do you get your inspiration to, uh, to do each of these? Like, is it just stuff that pops into your head where you're kind of like, oh, this would be, this would make for, something really uh eye-catching or just curiosity or you know i think it's a mixture of uh curiosity and it suddenly pops into my head probably the same thing <laughs> good good cool <laughs> but i actually never never think about will this appeal to my audience sure um i just i i recognize something in my surroundings and put my camera on it and actually i haven't done such brutal pieces for quite some time these are all from 2012 i think okay um but at that time i was was completely on for several months i had my camera always with me and always every time i saw something moving i put my camera on a tripod filmed five to ten minutes and when I got back home, I, I put it on the computer, put it in the algorithm and was pretty amazed what's coming out of there. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. I mean, when I, when, you, when I was filming, I often had no idea how it would look afterwards because I had no feeling for how fast the animals are moving, how many steps I will be capturing. I mean, the, the one you had open before with the 
the mosquitoes in the air. It's it's a hot yes. summer day where lots of uh, insects are flying in the air. Right. Yeah. It's not. And it almost looks like warm. a night. It almost looks like a nighttime photo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was always surprising. I mean, that's that's also something I really like about working like this. That's why I uh, call it generative art, even though most generative artists would probably not agree with me because <laughs> it's usually known as uh, you put uh, a simulation in a computer and let something draw your artwork without you interfering. Right. But uh, when you when you look at it in the in the true sense of the meaning then it's exactly the same it's just not simulated by a computer but simulated by our surroundings that's kind of the way i see it i mean it's uh, if you're hmm. one thing well, yeah. you 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 say when you when you make generative art is that you have um autonomous agents doing their thing Mm -hmm. And you can do the programming that something is uh, running around autonomous, autonomously, or in my case, I just uh, I just uh, look at animals, and I think I also have no uh, influence on how they are moving. So right. yeah. I consider it uh, also generative art. That's also mites. I still really? don't know what kind. But have you ever seen something like that? Um, yeah, I, again, it's almost difficult to see it outside of like, like to think of it as a one small thing. Yeah. Like one small insect, uh, when you see the whole piece, mm. but, uh, I've seen little mites that were that kind of color. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've seen them as a child. I was always fascinated. They were on on every hot summer day. They were running around stone. I had no clue why they are running around stone. <laughs> <laughs> right, and the patterns they make. It's so like that's what I think is one of the most fascinating parts yes. about this. Is like why why <laughs> <laughs> exactly? What, what did you find right there that made you turn around or you know? exactly? Yeah. That's also what? kind of, that's my, my scientific curiosity to, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I think I could have devoted my, my life to science as well. Yeah. Um, and only in, in these pictures and studying this motion patterns, patterns of different animals, I think there would be enough to, to do scientific work on it. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's interesting too, like you you were mentioning that this is generative art, but not necessarily in the sense that a lot of people talk about generative art uh, with yeah. like coding. But when you look at uh, or some some of the stuff I've seen where like pseudo random, like if you if you try to compare two images and one of them is truly random versus what's like pseudo random uh mm. a lot of times the one that looks more um the one that looks more random is not the one that's actually random mm -hmm. right, if that makes any sense so i think in uh i'm not sure what i'm saying there i think <laughs> i think i lost my thread but i guess yeah, i'm there, saying <laughs> there's, there's the red thread you can see <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly um life imitates uh we we try to imitate nature and uh so it's interesting to just watch nature do its thing and see how yeah. strange it is and we mean and, you could do far-fetching and think about if nature is a simulation as well right some famous yeah. people have this uh, theory <laughs> right right that's so cool. Um, I just I, one more. I think this is the first one that caught my attention. I'm yeah. pretty sure when uh, on our first art cast, we were randomly scrolling through uh, Hicket Nunk and I saw this and and again, this is mites. Yeah. 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 It's just it's epic. 
And I think you can see, I, I like that this one too, uh, you can kind of see the legs of the mites. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, a little bit, a little bit more here. So yeah. it even takes on more of that kind of almost like these little worms are creeping into your brain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love horror movies, like old school horror movies. So this is like, so this is the right thing for you. Yeah, it kind of, <laughs> it also makes me think of like H.R. Uh, Geiger um, mm -hmm. in that like mechanical, organic uh, style where yeah. because because of the stuttering frames, because like it mm -hmm. has almost this quality of being mechanical, mm -hmm. but organic at the same time. So when I think, when we first came across this, I wasn't sure that this was like, a living thing or if this was you know a computer generated uh mm -hmm. graphic so it's yeah it's really neat to be able to see that gap bridged yeah it's really funny there's this one guy on hick as well he's uh i don't remember his name but he's something with alien in his name and he's doing this these um ai images where he makes objects look like they are alien tissue okay and uh, once he asked, uh, send in your pictures and I will make alien tissue out of it. <laughs> yeah. And so, hey, I already found some, found some alien tissue myself. What do you think of it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, these are, these are great. Yeah, when you look at the, what do you think about the spiders? The, which one? The... One oh four four seven, yeah. Oh. That's a spider web. Really? The spider is just building the web. Whoa. <laughs> I don't even know. That is that's wild. Mm-hmm. Amazing. There you definitely see the legs. I mean, trigger yeah. warning for everybody who's afraid of spiders now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> if you have arachnophobia, yeah. you may want to turn off the screen. <laughs> Man, I, I just, that, that that's a spider, I don't know, that's just, it's, yeah. I'm kind of uh, in awe of that. That's. Mm -hmm. I had no idea before I shot this one that they are working. I had no idea how a spider is building its web. I mean, you look at the perfectly symmetrical piece of artwork that this animal is building somewhere. You don't even know how they make it stay there. Yeah. And uh, one morning I found a spider and it looked like, oh, okay, the web is not finished yet. It looks like the, the I don't know how it's called, the um, the things that go from, from the center to the outside were already there, uh -huh. but, but not the circles. Right. So I, I really had to, to hurry to get the camera and put it up there and let it roll for, I think, 20 minutes. That's, that's kind of time compressed. It's originally 20 minutes. Right. Um, and that one really got me when, when I put it in the algorithm and this came out. I mean, in the 20 minutes, I just saw a spider somewhere in the frame. I had no idea what it was really doing there and how it would look afterwards. Yeah. And uh, I mean, this precision, how it is walking around and having exactly the same path. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, yeah. Amazing. Um, is, uh, NFT Raider is curious about uh, your technical background, if, uh, if it hadn't been discussed. We touched on it just briefly, uh, but mm. uh, if you don't mind. Uh... Yeah, I am. I. I uh did study um media technology and photo engineering 
so there I had had this uh, kind of um, scientific studies in the basics and then media technology and, and digital imaging. And um, my, my design and, and art uh, part more or less is self-taught and, and came, was always running next to the technical stuff. So it was always most interesting for me to, to combine technology and art and yeah. that in the most in the in the most easy and simple and useful way I could think of. So uh, always, uh, and I think I always aim not to make things too complicated. Right. Keep it simple. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think uh, I think that translates here, where keeping it simple. I mean, you don't have to do much as far as like it, you don't have to add complexity because kind of especially in these situations nature is providing this, this complexity, complexity is everywhere in, in yeah. and of itself so you know you, might, also you might end up obscuring uh that complexity or yeah. minimizing it by adding too much yeah and that was it's also always my my thing i mean i also do macro photography so i'm i'm kind of used to to crawl around on all four some <laughs> yeah. somewhere in the grass <laughs> <laughs> yeah and there's to... something there's something about macro photography that is just so cool like just yeah. having such a large image of something so small yeah and i mean it's when when you realize how much living is going on in the tiniest detail i mean you just can can have a, a handful of of uh, soil from the garden and there is hundreds and thousands of animals in it and that's always blowing my mind in a similar way, like thinking about the universe and how vast everything is. That's, yes. that's two, two dimensions, the very large and the very small, that always fascinated me. Have you, uh, are you familiar with the movie Dazed and Confused? It's like a, it, no. it was like a movie uh, about the 70s. Uh, mm -hmm like hippie culture and stuff like that but there's this scene where they're like sitting on a on an old car and they're staring up at the sky smoking weed and uh oh wait maybe it's it's not you know what it's not days confused it's a animal house anyway they're <laughs> they're smoking weed and they're uh one guy's like you know one of we could be our universe could be a little piece of dirt under a giant being's fingernail <laughs> exactly and they kind of like they kind of you know whoa. Squinty eyes, like, whoa dude <laughs> and then someone's like wait a minute that means i could have an entire universe right here <laughs> under my fingernail and then everybody's just like what oh my god it's it's funny but it's you know it's yeah. It blows your mind when you when you do realize how that yeah. that relativity of you know experiencing time or uh, yeah it's it's mind blowing for sure. Also, Man uh, in Black was always playing very nicely with that topic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> all hail, all hail the what was it? Agent K. All hail Agent K. It was like <laughs> the second one. All hail the timekeeper, or whatever. <laughs> um, now, in like in the soil uh, with the mites, yeah, like these are so tiny. Yeah. What what kind of? I mean, are you using like um, like a DSLR digital camera and recording video with like yes. a lens that's macro lens on this? Because like the quality is really good and the I get sh you're very close you're like this is blown up quite a bit so that wasn't even a, a, a macro lens uh, at that time i was using a canon uh, eos 550 i think it's a t2i in america okay and um i mean it was for the time being for me it was a very good camera but i didn't 
It didn't really have a um, macro lens. Then. Right. So they are I, they are not that close. They are like I don't know two millimeters. Okay. And um, to be honest, I don't remember what kind of lens I was using back then. But nowadays, yeah, I... if 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 I if I decide to to do more like this, uh, now mm -hmm. I can also do it in 4K and uh, with my with my super sharp macro lens. I can't want. want that. Don't want to think about what that might look like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Well, and there's there's so many cool. It's, this uh, it actually reminds me. Uh, so missing animal who's in the chat. Uh, he does some photography work, mm -hmm. and he's been experimenting with um, uh, with layering images and whatnot. And uh, there's some really cool effects that that you get when you start layering mm -hmm. uh, with motion and it's just yeah it's it's uh this is all really really inspiring stuff so yeah what i really liked about it was my discovery to do it real time i mean i also use after effects quite a lot uh-huh um but working on those in after effects where you have to to layer the images by hand it's, it's it's a pain in the ass yeah and um i was working on I was actually kind of an idea or a request of a client of mine he was thinking about he was just thinking out loud uh, if he wanted to have something like like uh, the possibility to light paint with uh with video footage that he had a video footage of of a, uh, of a street at night where the cars are passing by and he wanted the effect that the the driving car was kind of making the light streaks you can from you, you know from from long time exposures right and it was important to have it in real time and that time i was thinking about hmm, how would that be possible and uh I was experimenting with Quartz Composer on Mac OS. Okay. It's, it's deprecated now. It's not, not accessible anymore. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Um, and these, um, the algorithm I used for this was programmed in, in Quartz Composer at that time. Gotcha. Um, I did want to mention for a couple people in the chat, um, we do. Uh, uh, Crypt Teams, Martin here has uh, been generous enough to uh, provide this beautiful NFT um, of the seagulls cruising around, making these beautiful shapes. Uh, so that'll be available to anybody in the chat uh, after the stream. Um, if you would like to collect it, I have figured a way out that was better. Uh, just DM us on Twitter at Taco Tezos or send an email to sageandpine at protonmail.com. And I'll leave that up for a little bit. Um, I've had a couple of uh, broadcasts where uh, I ended the broadcast and then closed the chat window and then all of my chats were gone. And I'm like, oh, ah, all the there's some shit. addresses. <laughs> so I'm like, damn it. Uh, I'm getting better though. I'm getting better. I'm figuring out my systems. <laughs> but I think you know what I thought about doing is um, is starting to because I do have some NFTs uh, that I want to give away still from uh, former broadcasts, and I'm starting to think that it would be cool to start doing like random drops as uh, as we go through the different Hicket Nunk. Uh, galleries and whatnot and find addresses because the addresses are listed um, and just randomly sending uh, some NFTs to some different people just uh, who will wake up and see them in their in their yeah. collection all of a sudden. Uh, <laughs> I also thought about doing that as like a uh, anonymous project, like doing some anonymous uh, minting and uh, almost like would it be like NFT bombing or something? I don't know. Like the opposite of a bot, where that's true. Yeah, it's the opposite <laughs> of a bot. You're personally infiltrating people's inboxes and giving them th something of value. 
I, I heard that also some people are doing that with uh, the Twitter handle with the Kukai wallet. Oh, right. Yeah. So you gen can just send something to, to a Twitter account. And yep. if this person might ever uh, make him or herself a Kukai wallet, <laughs> they realize there's already something in it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We've uh, we've done that for a couple people who uh, were joining in the broadcast and uh, didn't hadn't been aware of Tezos yet or uh, or just getting yeah. started. Um, and that's a really cool feature uh, when you think about it, um, because you can kind of, uh, for instance, um, I know that here I'm going to go to. Um, uh, Calament is doing their. Uh, do you uh, do you look at Calament very often? Yeah, I'm not looking very often, but I also have something on there. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, cool. It's uh, uh, so you're it you're familiar with the with the platform. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're doing a series uh, with Pangea Seed, uh, which is an environmental oh, yeah. organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, coming up here, um, where they're uh, combined, they've got 26 different artists from um, all over doing an exhibition uh, coming up next week. Mm. Um, so they're partnering with this organization, and I think it's great that uh, they're starting, you know, uh, kind of combining the clean NFT um, idea with you know, helping organizations that need it. Yeah. Um, and I, I thought about that because you could use, you could essentially link, um, you could factor in like say the royalty aspect of your art. Um, if you could program your NFT in a way that that royalty opened up a wallet for an organization of your choice, so mm -hmm. that all the royalties went to an organization by default every time Not it was sold. It. Yeah. And then you would, you would avoid having to convince an organization that they should be onboarded to Tezos. Uh, you could At some point they realized they have, they already do, uh, collected a lot and then they have right, to, to grab right. it. <laughs> yeah, that, don't miss nice this idea. opportunity. You've got, you've got a wallet that's already open and it already yeah. has a uh, Tezos in it and it's, you know, so uh, get on board. Let's go. <laughs> Would be a so, nice way to, to convince organizations to, to get on board. Yeah, exactly. So, but I'm not not sure about uh, how that would be done. I mean, to be honest, I have no idea about uh, blockchain programming. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a little it's still out of my reach. Uh, mm. I'm I'm like I'm working towards that uh, level of understanding. I do a little bit of programming, but I'm definitely in the building blocks basics of all of it. So I have some ideas, but. They're still ideas, so I, I like to talk about them at least. If someone picks up on them and uses them, then I'll be happy. But yeah. until I figure it out, like <laughs> I'll put it's it a, out there. It's a great idea, definitely. Um, but yeah, this is a so yeah, this will be next week. The uh, Pangea Seed Foundation teaming up with Calumet, and I think that's really cool. Um, and then it's World Art Day, which is awesome. I know yeah. Hicket Nunk has a. Oh, uh, this is the. Uh... That's um, uh, Edward Muybridge. Yes, the, uh, the, the we first. Were talking about him earlier. Yeah, he was the first, I think, who was doing something like my Zeitstrudel. <laughs> right, right. So this is using that same process or a similar process, but just much earlier. Yeah, uh, he, he invented a kind of like a, it was a machine gun for photography. Gotcha. And uh, he just rapidly took those those images to study motion. That's amazing. That's amazing, yeah. And since I love cinema, I thought uh, at some point I have to to go back to the roots. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Um, speaking of cinema. Um, 
what's uh, what's kind of your do you have a, a favorite genre of cinema do you have or some favorite filmmakers? Ooh. I'm very bad with uh, remembering names. That's or sure. styles even. Yeah, sci-fi sci sci is, I think, my main thing. Nice. Ooh, that's very sci-fi right there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of that's going on on, on Hicket Nunk is very sci-fi. Yeah. Man. So yeah, um, we're going to, uh, I think that's a good in, uh, segue into kind of what we like to do um, in, the, in the second half of the, the show is to kind of browse uh, Hick at Nunk and just check out some of the cool stuff that's going on. Uh, so that's... do you want to stick around and, and, and participate or you got, you got somewhere to be? No, definitely. I want to stick around. Okay, perfect. Um, do you know of the, the new browser that, that popped up last week? No. There is a browser where you can send you the link. Some yeah, guy from the Netherlands. And that's really helpful to, to find things he's uh, have discover undiscovered artists where you can find only artists that haven't sold anything and you can filter by the amount the the the, the price and well, so many other things you can finally filter text oh really okay so that's a perfect tool for browsing <laughs> yes let's see I'm really looking forward for for Hiketnang to implement something like that on their own side. I mean, it's kind of this the, the stream on the on the main page. It's so fast gone. Yeah, it's it's impossible to keep up with. I mean, yeah, uh, that's kind of one of one of the things I think uh, why I wanted to start this podcast is like yes to start you know if i'm randomly browsing um and seeing stuff you know bookmarking it setting it up on a blog and mm -hmm. listing it you know i'm my what comes up in my feed is going to be completely different from everyone else's so it's nice to at least capture some of it and mm -hmm. try to turn people on to different uh stuff but uh but yeah it's hard to to navigate sometimes this is cool so what okay so walk me through this because uh, i mean as far I as i can it's pretty clear right here yeah, yeah. i discovered i discovered artists. it myself a few days ago okay <coughs> wow that's pretty neat well and you know what is cool about this too is that you're you're seeing verified artists on here. Yes, and you have so... the, the ability to switch between uh, uh, artists with profile and without. That's great, because yeah, that was something I started to realize. Uh, I think the last the last podcast when we did kind of our recap blog was a lot of the stuff that I'm I've been bookmarking and sharing. Um, half of it you know, is unverified. And so I started to, I'm, I'm being a lot more mm -hmm. st stringent about what I end up sharing as far as, uh, you know, what I'm posting is, you know, I'm trying to make sure it's verified so that people go to, you know, make sure those copy mentors, uh, I avoid those. Yeah. yeah. And the verification I think is really helpful for that. I, I mean, it's, it's a big step. It's not perfect, but nothing yeah. will be. Nothing ever will be. Perfect. I think the baking bad guys have quite something to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Boba Fett on Boba Fett. <laughs> oh, somebody's somebody's cashing in on old school memes. Mm -hmm. That's neat. So yeah, if you, you know what, uh, if you want to, uh, 
I wouldn't mind handing the uh, the reins over to you to do a little strolling yourself uh, if you, if you wanted to to share some some, some stuff or uh, hmm. or scroll through uh, Hicket Nunk yourself and pick out some some gems. Hmm. I'm thinking about how to find those gems. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> These are cool. Oh, actually, there's one place you could uh, you could have a look at right now. It's the um, there's one profile for the World Art Day. Oh, yes. That every participating artist uh, was asked to transfer their their NFTs to. Yes. And. Let me see if I find I find that account. Let's see what we got here. It shouldn't be that hmm. Oh, yeah. I have a Tizos address for you. Oh, perfect. They also had the idea to donate everything they they make from this from every uh, sale today to uh, I think Creative Commons Foundation. Oh, nice! Yeah. This is World Art Day 2021. So this is the uh, the World Art Day uh, gallery. Yeah. At this yeah. address. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Come on, you. <laughs> I'm happy that it's uh, that it's up and running right now. I think this two hours ago or something, it got, you know, was was kind of completely not working. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what I need to do. There we go. Yeah, and it's all under collection. No, no creations there. Right. Oh, very cool. Okay, cool. Nice. It's populating. Wow. That's that's I think kind of the the first curated collections, except for for personal collections, of course. Sure. Okay. Um, let's see. I've got. Okay, the World Art Day website let me just go there because i gotta uh kind of want i know there's a theme so i believe this is it nope that's not it not the right one There we go. Artists of Hicket Nunk creating NFTs to fundraise for the Creative Commons. Okay, so if you go to the website. Hi, uh, yeah. Themes. I think there was three Oh, I themes. didn't know that one. So culture, environment, health, technology, and wealth. That one's running a little bit slow, so I'm going to go back here. But yeah, this is nice. That's pretty cool. 
Yeah, that's kind of an, an issue. I think as soon as you have many videos in a collection, it takes forever to show up. Yeah. This is neat. I don't know if you can see it from there, but uh, this has lots of little colors in this background. Oh, nice. Almost like uh, you could put on some 3D glasses and... Maybe, maybe find something in it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or stare at it long enough and look through it. And mm -hmm. uh, there's another art piece there. <laughs> do, you, do you remember those? Those, uh, I mean, I'm sure they're still around, but they're like the magic eye art. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Are they still around? I haven't seen them, I don't know, for decades. That's a good question. <laughs> you know, maybe it's time they made a comeback. Yeah, that, that in VR. Wow. Yeah, right? <laughs> Stereograms. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> stereogram. In times okay, of 3D yeah. cinema, sure. probably stereograms are a bit, a bit outdated. I remember the first first time I, I saw one of those, I was staring at it and the heck, I couldn't see anything. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea how to do it. <laughs> and then the person next to you is like, ah, oh, you can see the dolphins yeah. clearly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you slow poke. Yeah, once those videos start getting uploaded, it's uh... yeah. Magic Eye used to put them out. Yeah, that's right. Magic Eye. I remember, yeah. That's that's going to be the next big wave of NFTs, watch. Ooh. The Magic <laughs> the Magic Eye comeback and uh, the Pogs, Pogs renaissance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's in collection. That's why it's not loading, because I'm not in the right um, tab. <laughs> I like the dancing tree. Have you seen it there? Oh, yeah. This one here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Artist Bjorn Kaleha. Oil on paper, hand-painted animation. Yeah, I love that. Oh, that is so cool. Yes. That is cool. I really love the ability to animate by hand, to to have that level of abstraction, to to see the the movement steps in your head before you paint them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, animation is so neat. Like stop motion stuff is so cool, and yeah, and and that's I, I think that's another cool thing, uh, being able to do. To do those short animations on on a platform like this is nice. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, but no, it's not loading anymore. Let's go. Come on, buddy. Oh, I don't want to go there. <laughs> Maybe we just brought too many people on there. Yeah, that's right. We just broke it. We broke. We broke <laughs> hen. <laughs> well, while that loads up, uh, I'm gonna pop over to uh, Calament and see uh, see what's new over there. Cause I think because I believe so. They do a weekly drop with a new artist. Um, mm. And I think I think more and more as uh, as Calumet grows and kind of refines its its platform, it's it's getting better and better. So that's that's cool. Yeah. Uh, yes. Life under the Moon collection by Moon Life under the Moon Moon Culture. I've seen him in some of the chats. This is nice. Yeah, Moon Culture rings a bell. I think I'll probably uh, publish my Calumet pieces when I'm done with the Zatched Woodle series. Yeah. So 
So how long uh, or how many pieces are you doing for the Zeitstrudel series? The, uh, is it like a set amount that you've already kind of laid out or uh, is it evolving? Right at the moment, it's a set amount of pieces I just have. And it's mm -hmm. kind of, uh, I mean, it's, it's not that, that fixed. So it's possible to do more if I find something I, I want to observe and, and make again. Yeah. But uh, right at the moment, there's not the plan to make more. I, I, I It's 28 pieces now. Right. And I already published 14. So it's actually the giveaway today is number 15. So it's, it's half time. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And I, I really don't know yet if I, if the, the bug bites me again and I have to have the urge to go out and, and observe tiny animals again, then maybe I put something on again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if you can get, uh, if you can get a video of uh, a mosquito taking blood from you or something, I mean, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. time, time lapse that and yeah <laughs> that would be that'd be something oh that guy with the the right one the the guy without a face that yeah. looks familiar yeah tentacles on the flowers Jack Verstek's oh, yeah. intervention of the work, The Flower Girl, Charles Cromwell Ingham. Yeah, but it's not the guy I I came across on Twitter. Hmm. It's interesting too. It's like uh, it's like sampling and stuff uh, in music has become become very like commonplace. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, and I guess collage art is already like, it's like sampling uh, in art. I was going to say this is like mm -hmm. a remix of uh, an old, an old painting, but like I was thinking of it as kind of a newer idea, but collage work has been doing that for a long time. So I don't know. Uh, but this is, this is interesting. It's, it's a new dimension. Yeah. Another, another take on it. Yeah. Now, see, I want to see this elephant with 3D glasses. Dang it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get some 3D glasses just for uh, just for viewing stuff like that. That really messes with my eyes. Yeah, it kind of hurts. <laughs> oh, and we've been waiting for I, I can... to do a dark, dark, uh, dark mode. That's that's next. Dark step. mode on Calamint, yeah. yeah. That's what we need. Mm -hmm. All right. I haven't seen any uh, audio Calamint, so no. Nope. Nope. I mean. This will be a I don't know. They have uh, just recently added the possibility to do video before it was only uh, still images. Let's see what and we they got certainly here. don't have the possibility to have HTML right now. Right. So that's definitely very unique for Ikatnang. Yeah, it's a pity when you have um, have to mint it as a video. It gets larger, unnecessarily larger, even when you just use an image. Right. Yeah. 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 Huh. And I don't know what the limitation is right now on color mint. Right, because uh, you could just have the audio bar here, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know, if you don't have an eye catcher, it's probably uh, even harder to to promote. Yeah, that's true. Let's try, uh, that's, that was the bigger hand. Actually, let me open that link up there. Uh, and then we've got another one here. 
All right, I'm going to let you pick between these three. Which ones do you think we should check out? Orbitones, Cosmosis, or Neutrino? Neutrino. Neutrino. I'm checking that one out. Maybe this one's more visual. Ah, yeah. I have an app that's kind of working like that. It's, it's oh, really? like like a modular synthesizer you can put these these nodes on it yeah. and they 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 emit and when they hit the next node they create a sound and different uh different tune heights and different instruments all defined by different color and different shapes it's it looks kind of similar huh it's i wonder, nice if, idea. I wonder if it's the, the same Oh, I think I knew the guy who's making that. Yeah, Mar yeah. Marcelo Modular. Yes. Nice. He's he's on Hikatnank as well. You'll have to uh, you have to share that app uh, name because I'm I'm curious. Yes. Let me see if I find it. If I find it right now, good. Um... Hmm. Note bead. Note bead. Note bead. Note bead. No, no, with a D, like a like a. Oh, node, node. Yeah. Okay. And with a T in the end. Note beat. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got the T and the D backwards. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm flooding the chat with my my terrible notes. <laughs> my terrible <laughs> note taking. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can I ask you something completely yeah, different Please. away from art? Yes. What's about the tacos? I have been what's, with, in, what's with the tacos? Yeah, I have been with Tesos since the beginning, but I have no clue where the tacos came from and what it's all about. I mean, every everywhere you go, you find tacos. <laughs> and even salsa now. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I don't know exactly where the taco thing started, but... I know the first thing I saw was the um, uh, taquito, and taquito is like an API for building smart contracts. So mm -hmm. they're kind of like you can, you know, it's a big part of what's fueling or what's uh, behind like some of the platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of like the big pieces of software that was introduced, and I don't know if that's where it started and. Because people were using Taquito, yeah, they, it kind of branched off from there and just became like a taco thing. Or I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, tacos. I think it was one of the first really crazy sales on Hikatnank in February. Was the golden taco for 100 tesos? Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> What's going on? Right. It was definitely one of those things where uh, you kind of scratch your head and say, really? Yeah. 100, 100 Tez for that? Okay. <laughs> Art's relative. It's subjective. Okay. Why not? <laughs> right. Why not? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. These are anyway, nice. I like tacos. <laughs> I like tacos too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my friend uh, sh taught me how to make some really great corn, uh, homemade corn tortillas. Oh man, it's a game changer with some, uh, <laughs> with some corn flour and oh my goodness, they're the best tacos ever. <laughs> I don't know how uh, how your tacos are in Germany, but there's there are no man, not many places where you get some, but you can get some. Yeah. Do you ever make tacos at home? I never did, no. Oh, man. Well, you should make some tacos. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now that we are all on Tezos, maybe that's a thing everybody should do. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Have a have a taco day, like t have a Taco Tuesday, you know. Yeah, yeah. indeed. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. Yeah, that's nice. Looks like three D print. Ah, it's this skull again. Okay. Just on the f on the first sight, I didn't realize it's a skull. There are so many skulls everywhere. Yeah, right. That's like I feel like uh, like any art form. It's like as a kid, even it's like one of the first things you want to be able to draw is a skull. It's like something so punk rock about it. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, like, that's. Yeah, people true. love skulls. Like, <laughs> it's almost like if you if you're trying to sell something, if you include a skull, you know you're gonna you're gonna be successful. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe you should do something with a skull. You think? Maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a skull taco, somehow. That could be a formula for success. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> straight to, fix straight and. To, Pixelated skull tackle. That's it. You're just combining all of those great things. As long as it, as long as you mint it, they will come. <laughs> Thinking about my next series. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Looks like we got another Calumet video. Let's see what this one is. Again, I haven't seen this feature before, so it's. It's yeah. nice to see them evolving. I th and I, I wonder, you know, I've kind of speculated on it before, but uh, Hicket Nunk being totally open source, um, they seem to be able to adapt really quickly um, mm -hmm. to changes and requests. And um, I think just by default, open sourcing increases the size of your team working on it. Um, people want to get involved. And I think maybe that's one thing with Hick and Nunk. It's not open source. So mm. they're, well, at least that I've been able to find. Um, no, so they are not open source. They're restricted to yeah. their team and what their team's doing. Yeah. And I, I know they've got a good team and they're working hard. But uh, yeah, it's just they're, they're not, um, not as nimble, mm. I guess is the word. Uh, but they're making the changes. Better, better, better late than never, and better yes. to write. Yeah, better, better wait and make it right than. Exactly. All right, nice little three D card. Hmm. I I'd like to uh, with with three D objects like this. Um, you know, it's nice to be able to move them around yourself. Yeah. Especially if it's uh, really like simple and straightforward um mm. like this is really pretty i'd love to just like turn it and twist it around myself as opposed to a you know quick eight second loop but that's just me yeah i think that's also quite something possible with uh, gsls shaders mm -hmm. real-time 3d stuff that's i think it's fascinating i've seen this have you seen the little red riding hood the 3D piece you can navigate in on Hicket Nunk. Oh, I haven't seen that. Uh -uh. It was a very, very dark 3D scene with a giant wolf and a tiny girl standing on the nose of the wolf and very dark forest in the background. And you can zoom in and turn around and look in every angle and every detail. Wow. Kind, kind of like a, like a VR drawing. I have no idea how they made it. Yeah. But, uh, that that was something that fulfills this urge to move around in in the in a three D space like that. Yeah, this is pretty neat. Sweet. I wish I could get it bigger, but I'm sure if I bought it, it would be bigger. Um, speaking of, uh, well, I just want to say hi to Citizen B and NFT Raider uh, in the chat. Um, just wanted to say what's up. We got crypt crypt teams here. How do you say that? Is it cryptems? Crypt teams? Any way mm. you want? Take it as you want. Okay, I like it. <laughs> crypt teams is okay. I uh, I think the first time I reposted one of your uh, uh, one of your pieces, I think I labeled it crypt memes 
on accident. Oh. Um, yeah. And, the, and then uh, <laughs> I can see why. The, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, uh, already, it's clear that I'm. Uh, I kind of mix my letters up, uh, as you can see, ten times in my node beat, node beat thing. So, <laughs> I think I may have a hint of dyslexia uh, creeping in as uh, as I get older. <laughs> yeah, I think with with my name, I could also uh, have made a meme account. A, a, crypto, a meme account. A crypto meme account. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I missed it. Damn, <laughs> you missed your window. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of bears, Tazonian. Uh, that's still an, a, a thing that when you mint uh, more than single editions, it all uh, displays all, all editions display. It's not shown as as you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Now let me go, let's see, I'm going to close these windows. And <clears throat> let's see if the Hicket Nunk uh, World Art Day profile is back up yet. Yay. Yay. <clears throat> uh, so if you're just joining us, it is World Art Day today. So that's exciting. Um, and Hen Hicket Nunk put out an, an artist call to uh, mint art around World Art Day over some several subjects. Uh, so yeah, this is the gallery. I put the gallery uh, address in the chat. And uh, yeah, so we're just looking through some of this stuff. Um, this is neat. I want I, this. I'm wondering if this is a photograph, or if it's an oil painting that's been it's animated. But that's pretty, pretty cool looking. Hmm. Give a shout out if anything catches your eye. Yeah. I like this. I like photos too. Hmm. Webcam portrait 25. In 2011, I took a portrait series of strangers encountered in on online chats. They were captured from a computer monitor and manipulated and exhibited in the real world the same year. In 2021, these portraits are back to their initial environment as limited edition NFTs. First exhibition, Canas Photo Festival 2011, published in the New York Review of Books, Der Grief. FK Magazine, among others. A project by Roman Dritz. Hmm. Nice. Cool. What about the one directly below that one? Oh, this yeah. landscape. I like the ability to blow it up big. It's nice. Yeah. 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 I like that one. It's like being in a in an ice cave or something. Yeah. That's cool. Refract. Created by Laurent La Torpille. AKA LLT. <laughs> I designed a ray marching, ray marching algorithm around reflection and refraction to create glass and light architectures. Not familiar with that, but the product or the, the thing that comes out of it is really cool. So yep. ray marching algorithm, thumbs up. <laughs> hmm. We've seen some poetry on here too. That's been pretty, pretty cool. Poetry, music, it's just so much variety. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so, so awesome. I like this little guy. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of uh, uh, those Halloween candy corns. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Halloween candy corns on his head. But the true story is, is that this is a Hayoka, a kind of sacred clown in some native cultures of North America. Okay. Or she is a contrarian, jester, and satirist. This manifests by their doing things backwards or unconventionally, riding a horse backwards, wearing clothes inside out, or speaking in a backwards language. They ask difficult questions and say things others are too afraid to say. As NFT artists, we can be inspired by them and try to take on some of their roles in this new global decentralized society. That's All nice. Right. Yeah. I like that. Hayoka. Ooh. Like mm, looks like, like slime mold. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. Come on, slime mold. Load. Slime mold don't care. He's it, slime mold's on its own time. Yeah. <laughs> Always keep it slow. That's right. That's right. That's what we were talking about earlier. It's like with uh, the generative art that you're making, it's it's like riding a bike. Hey, there's yours. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Crypt teams. Yeah. This is this is our uh, this is our special NFT for the day. Right? Or is this a different one? This is a different one. That's a different one. That's Birds the team. the. Uh... That's the one every sale goes to Creative Commons. Right. That's right. But uh, apparently so this, none this of the collection is on sale right now. So I don't know. I probably it was all too, too short-handed to set up the, the account and everything. I'm, I'm curious how they are going to proceed with it. But it's out there. That's right. Uh, yeah, right. It's really cool. Uh, Citizen B, um, some of the, uh, some of the generative artworks that Crypt Teams has been making, uh, is just phenomenal. And really we were talking about it earlier. It's like, or I was about to say, it's kind of like walking versus riding a bike versus driving in a car, you know? Yeah when you slow down you're you're able to see some and appreciate some of the things that you miss uh in such a fast-paced world and the generative art that uh crypt teams martin here is making is yeah. really explores that and showcases yeah. that to answer your question citizen b yes it follows in that one. Oh. on on the giveaway today it's uh, seagulls they That's fly right. quite differently. <laughs> they do. They do. I was just uh, watching our, some birds yesterday. It was really windy here. And uh, these birds were trying to get to a, uh, to a power line to sit with some other birds. And just watching them kind of navigate the wind was amazing. It's just so cool. It's like yeah. they're riding these currents that I can't even <laughs> see that would just, you know, they knock over my trash cans all the time, but these birds that are just light as a feather, wait. They're surfing, feather. surfing the, the air waves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, summer is returning, hopefully. <laughs> all right. Okay, I was, I was confused here for a second. This is really a neat layout uh, here. Um, so it makes me think of like, you know, silent film, uh, yeah. something like that. Um, and it says from, a Hiligaynon, Hiligaynon, Hiligaynon folk song, I Kalasud, um, translation, oh, how sad, it's sad to be forsaken. Day and night I cry over you. Oh, unlucky lady, where are you now? Uh, mm. stere stereo photo taken mm. during the American occupation in the Philippines. So, oh, okay. So this is, it's an old photo from uh, the American occupation of the Philippines, 1900. Wow. With a folk song uh, around it. Wow. So let's 
great. Educational. And yeah, I think on the on the um, on the World Art Day uh, pieces, they are all themed. They had these three different themes: uh, environmental, history, and I forgot about the third one. Technology, I think. Yeah. And I think uh, every piece there is is dedicated to one of those three categories. This is Meta Dreams. Hmm. Will we live in a metaverse or are we already in it? World Art Day 2021. Whoa. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> cool. And I'm assuming this is just going to keep growing or uh, unless it's already kind of submitted and done, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, no idea. Oh, that would be also nice interactive. Yeah, for sure. Oh. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Of course. <laughs> of course. Uh oh. Okay. Let's see if I can. Okay. There it is. Real small. Click over here. No. Oh. Dragging it around a little bit. Ah, I double click it and it gets closer. Ah. Or further. That is neat. <laughs> Citizen B seems like half the art on hen is drug induced. <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, that's funny. It's definitely out of this world stuff. I'm a, I'm gonna call this one the Weeping Third Eye. Let's see if, if I've got it right. Ouch. Dip. She di dips her brush in her own soul, paints her own world into her pictures. She is Mother Nature. All right. All right. I see you. Dip. Dip to dip. So we got about 10 minutes left. You know, let's go through the random feed again and uh, explore a little bit. Random. What do you think about the um, the HDAO feed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've gone through it a couple times. Uh, let's, let's go through that. We did visit the... Uh, the other one. I think it's a cool idea to have like an interactive upvoting kind of thing going on. Um, mm -hmm. I know I'm like completely lost when it comes to uh, the trading of the tokens, though. <laughs> like I'm in a couple of feeds for like Quippy Swap and Dexter Exchange and stuff, and it's just I think it's just kind of beyond where uh, where I'm at. Uh, mm -hmm. Same here. It's. Uh, I mean, it's nice that you you earn the H DAO and you can put it out to to upvote other pieces, but yeah, I I have no idea how it really works. And I mean, I think there are like these pieces are up there since ever. I think. <laughs> yeah. And I think when, as soon as you are in this feed, you are likely to get more upvotes. Sure. Yeah, because oh. uh, I know um, this piece has been at top, on top for a while. Yeah. yeah. At least a week. Mm. Uh, we bought one of the his one of this uh, artist pieces 
uh, on one of the streams. It was it was mm. awesome. Uh, he's doing like uh, he or she is doing a coloring book kind of concept. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is yeah. Uh, this is the same feed, huh? Oh yeah, the tiger guy. Well, that makes me curious. On uh, like this one's newer, but that's new, yeah. Oh, that's cool. That reminds me of the Nevada desert right there. <laughs> I need to do some. Uh, I got a drone. I should do some more aerial photography. There was another interactive one. This one? No, further no, down. No. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, hey now. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Whoo. <laughs> nice. That's cool. Rubber spaghetti. Mm hmm. Ah, it's, oh. no, it's actually the name. Okay. Uh, Johan Carlson. We've seen some of his stuff before. Really cool. Okay. okay. Citizen B says, please do aerial photography. I'm a geographer. Love, <laughs> Love the world from above. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. All right, let's go back to random. The H dial feeds a little slow, and it's like you said, it's a lot of the same stuffs there. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that's crazy. I mean, I think there should be a taco there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the taco shop. That's right. That's right. Where's the taco? Where's the skull? Come on. Get it together. <laughs> Do you want to be successful or just be creative, damn it? Get your tacos and skulls together. That's kind of... I like that's that. nice. Yeah. A bit creepy, I love but I nice. love double yeah I love double exposure like yeah. that's one of my favorite things like I uh, I've had this Polaroid camera for a while and I I keep trying it it always frustrates me because I love when I get it right mm -hmm. but when I get it wrong it's so expensive <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> my Polaroids just keep going like <laughs> no. Oh, but man, when I get it right, yeah, it's... And you do double exposure on Polaroid? Yeah. Nice. Uh, some of the newer, uh, some of the newer models that have come out um, allow you to do, um, to have full control of all the settings via your mm -hmm. phone app. So you can do uh, double exposures, you can do, um, you can adjust the aperture and... Mm -hmm. Um, some of that stuff uh, that you couldn't do on some of the older older ones or you had to really mess around with the mechanics of it. Yeah. yeah. But... Hmm. Looks like it might be in right now. Whoops. Was that Garfield? I thought I saw Garfield. Yeah, that was Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> the whale. Uh, I do some, oh, 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 what happened there? This thing just jumped all over the place. Mm. Oh, all right, let's, uh, I'm going to open this up and read it. Uh, Citizen B, do you develop your own films and enlarge the neg negatives on Ilford paper? Have Ooh. you, have you done any, uh, film developing? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, I did a lot uh, of black and white photography. I had, uh, also Ilford films and what was the name? It was old. Uh, it's very old 
film stock from I don't know the X uh, DDR um, from from the east mm. and um, oh, I forgot the name. It was really crazy. It was so grainy and uh, it looked like I don't know three. 3200 uh, ISO and it was a hundred. <laughs> wow. Man. That was, it was really fun. Yeah, I, I do some uh, AGFA. Citizen B is saying maybe AGFA film. Yeah, that's outdated now as well. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Uh, I started doing some, some film photography a few years back and I actually I have an enlarger in my closet. Uh, that I've used a little bit, um, but yeah, it would be fun to do some, uh, originally when I started doing, like getting into Tezos and stuff, I was doing that a lot and kind of wanted to do like, develop my own film, uh, print it on the enlarger and then mint it and then send it like. You yeah, know, the whole process and everything. And so that kind of got me excited about NFTs originally was like, you know, connecting the analog digital world. And uh, I just haven't circled back to it yet. Eventually I will. I just got got a hint on another channel. The old uh, East German film stock was Orvo. O-R-W-O. O-R-W-O? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, I love, uh, yeah, there's just, there's something really cool about, I think this ties into kind of talking about uh, natural, the natural world versus kind of digital representations of chaos and stuff. It's like, um, like the act of manipulating film, whether it's like soaking negatives in urine or somebody <laughs> I know did that. Uh, mm -hmm. and then developing them uh, or recreating something similar uh, digitally, they both have kind of unique qualities to them. Um, but there is something really fun about, you know, the unpredictability of nature and unpredictability of those uh, chemical Absolutely. components. That's it's really the, fun. The excitement to that you don't know what's, what the end product will look like. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. That's also the thing that I, I like about my, my work because when I when I shoot it, I have no idea how it will look afterwards. But uh, I have the um, the upside. I, I don't have to worry about costs because I can can shoot it anytime again. <laughs> Absolutely, you're right. You're right. No, but it's really crazy. I mean, film stock nowadays it's so expensive. Yep. Yep. Um, this is. Let's see, the ocean, he can't lie to her anymore is the description. On the cliff, they sat on the wooden bench seat, looking out across water. Below them, waves crashed upon the dark roof. Above them, dark rocks. Above them, broken clouds drifted inland, their shadows playing over the landscape. Slowly she turns and with saddened eyes looks at him, unsure. Do you still love me, she asks. He continues to look out across the ocean and not wanting to lie to her anymore. He says nothing. Mm. <sighs> <laughs> Let it sink in. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, yeah, I was talking to a friend about uh, with the about the programmability of smart contracts and stuff, and mm. you know, you could you could realistically. Um, release a book in a similar way or a story in a similar way where, um, you know, kind of connecting. Absolutely. Connecting geocached, you know, things yeah. around the city or, or whatnot in order to peel back the chapters or to open up chapters or connecting images to, ch you know, the, uh, there's some really cool stuff that's going to happen. I, I think that will it. all come up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it feels so crazy. I mean, think about it. It's just two months that this thing is really rolling. What what happened in these two months already? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right? Oh, man. Um, well, I uh, 
we got to wrap it up. Um, I have uh, some things I have to do afternoon here, and uh, it's been about a little over two hours now. So yeah, um, I do want to thank you so much. I want to put up your um, link again. Um, where where else can people find you? Uh, right now, is it mostly on Twitter and Hick and Dunk? Yeah, or, mostly on uh, Twitter. Okay, perfect. Okay, quick. Okay, I have it up. Okay, I've got that one up. Yeah. Um, uh, so Twitter at Crypt Teams, um, and then if you want to collect your uh, exclusive NFT from Crypt Teams for today, uh, just please. Uh, DM me on Taco Tezos at Twitter or at Twitter at Tacos Tezos uh, or email me at sage underscore and underscore pine at protonmail.com with your Tezos address so it doesn't get lost in my chat when I accidentally close it down <laughs> and uh, we'll get to that so again Martin it's perfect so fun and a pleasure to meet you uh, do you yeah, have any, you anything else you wanted to add or uh, any anything else you wanted to mention before we go I think we talked about pretty much everything I wanted to talk about today. <laughs> it was really Excellent. nice to be here. Thanks very much for inviting me. And I'm, I'm looking forward what's what what else you will show on, on your channel. I really like it. Hey, thank you so much. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep in touch for sure. Yeah, we will. Excellent. Good to meet you. Thanks. And we'll see you next time. Thanks to everyone, everybody who was listening. <laughs> That's right. See All you right. on Twitter or wherever. That's Have a right. nice day. <laughs> All right. See you later. And bye bye. To, to everybody in the chat, thank you so much. You're awesome. Uh, yeah. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye. I make a black wavy hand here. <laughs> I wish my ha I wish my hand was doing the same. We'll pretend. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.